Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, first of all, I would like to uh, thank very much to Frank Mikhail uh, for, invitation, uh, for inviting me uh, to take part in this nice conference. And uh, now I would like uh, just to include a piece of maybe geography, a piece of history. Simply Brno is here, Munich is here, and uh, this is uh, uh, the Institute of Biophysics where I am uh, where I am associate uh, for practically exactly 30 years. I have celebrated this anniversary last week, and I am also involved in teaching at the Masaryk University. A piece of history uh, is uh, linked to the name of uh, Hans Gregor Mendel, the founder and uh, of genetics, and uh, it was the man who discovered the laws of heredity, and uh, we in Brno are very proud of that. And. Uh, Another big name is Professor Emil Palacek, my former mentor, who uh, was at the beginning of the electrochemistry of nucleic acids. Nucleic acids somehow uh, make a link between Mendel and Palacek in this sense, yes, because heredity is uh, one of the functions of nucleic acids. Uh, Emil Palacek was the first uh, scientist who observed that uh, if uh, he applied uh, osteographic polarography to study DNA, observed something which is linked to reduction of something in DNA. And later it became uh, clear that uh, this something uh, is uh, nucleic acid basis and uh, particularly uh, this peak, which is common in, uh, in uh, random DNA, it is common for cytosine and adenine reduction uh, at mercury, and today we can say also at uh, carbon electrodes, because we learned how to uh, apply uh, carbon electrodes at such negative potentials. Uh, in the negative potential region, you can observe al also something uh, which is uh, related to absorption desorption processes. I will tell you some, some more details later. And this peak, and again I will uh, pay some attention to that even later. On carbon, which is may, may be better known, uh, the nucleic acid basis uh, can be oxidized uh, and produce uh, analytically useful signals like this uh, oxidation peak of guanine, adenine, thymine, cytosine. These, these two are better detectable than those which are very close to the background discharge. Uh, two remarks here. Uh, these signals, uh, with the exception of this overlap in the signal of cytosine and adenine, uh, were uh, considered to be independently detectable. It means that it was uh, uh, anticipated that uh, there is no influence of oxidation, for example, uh, reduction of cytosine and behavior of guanine at, uh, at uh, uh, the electrode surface. I will show you that this is not the case. And uh, there was also evidence that accessibility of nuclear bases for the contact with the electrode uh, which is influenced by formation of secondary structures like DNA duplex or other uh, other secondary structures can obviously because we are speaking about accessibility of bases uh, influence the intensity and maybe also position of the electrochemical signals uh, only briefly this is rather classical <laughs> slide. Uh, here you can see a huge difference between duplex DNA and single stranded DNA when you measure the signal of cytosine and adenine reduction. There is practically nothing for the duplex because the sites of reduction in cytosine and in adenine are hidden inside the, the double helix. And in the denatured DNA, they are accessible and are preferentially adsorbed at the electrode surface. 
So uh, this is the reason for, for this huge difference. Uh, instead of the, uh, instead of the uh, Faradaic reduction or oxidation signals, we can also uh, observe what happens with uh, signals which are of tensometric origin. They are linked to dissolution of DNA absorbed at the electrode surface. And if you have a perfect double helix, you have only one dissolution peak. If the double helix is somehow distorted, you can get another peak which is called or numbered as peak 212, two, it's clear. And uh, in this case, you, uh, it has been, it has been uh, assigned to uh, desorption or reorientation of molecules which are absorbed in this distorted double helical regions uh, in which the bases or the edges of base pairs can come into contact with the electrode. And of course, if you have a single-stranded DNA, uh, there is another peak uh, which is specific for uh, single-stranded, unpaired, freely accessible nucleic acid bases. Uh, yes, uh, so you can see some effects of individual DNA components, unpaired bases, edges of the base still pairs and the sugar phosphate backbone. Uh, this gives you some information about the DNA structure and we are, here we are talking about the properties of duplex DNA or duplex DNA versus single-stranded DNA. And using these principles, we uh, proposed uh, a couple of techniques uh, of the detection of DNA damage uh, based on the differences of uh, the accessibility of bases and also the uh, uh, susceptibility of the duplex DNA to unwinding at the electrode surface. It is duplex single stand transition. Uh, recently, we observed a couple of phenomena that make uh, this scheme uh, a little bit uh, incomplete and uh, the behavior of nucleic acids at the, uh, at the electrodes uh, a little bit more complicated than it was generally accepted. And I will tell you a few words about some effects of primary structure, something about catalytic hydrogen evolution by unmodified nucleic acids and its interference with uh, electrochemical signals of uh, particular bases. And then I will be speaking briefly about uh, a couple of uh, recent applications of electrochemistry to detect modification of DNA with something, something which is different from the natural uh, DNA components. And uh, finally, I will mention uh, how to circumvent uh, application of mercury electrodes if needed. Uh, the first uh, note is devoted to uh, this paper, which has been uh, published a, a couple of years ago, and it is about two-dimensional condensation of some pieces of DNA on the mercury electrode in negative potential uh, regions. And, uh, Somehow it follows uh, the work of Professor Vladimir Vettel and his uh, successors. This is Tonda Hassoun, Stanislav Hassoun, from our department. Uh, there is a huge amount of data on uh, the condensation of uh, monomeric nucleic acid components in potentials around the potential of zero charge. And these bases and nucleosides, maybe nucleotides, behave uh, like this. They produce such capacitance pits indicating uh, 2D condensation at the surface. Uh, these are not monomeric components. These are very short oligonucleotides, uh, tri- or uh, pentanucleotides. And you can see that there, there is something to happen in, uh, in the uh, let's say neutral, electrically neutral region of, of the 
of, of potentials applied at the working electron. Uh, when the strands are longer, you can observe something different, and I uh, will show you what I extracted from this uh, huge picture, only for A50, C50, and T50, and you can see here that the capacitance uh, CA curve of the adenine or uh, homoadenine or uh, looks like uh, the DNA uh, voltammogram. It was uh, when, I, when I was talking about the effects of sugar phosphate backbone and bases, etc. Yeah, so you have the two major peaks. If you do the same with C50 and T50, cytosine and thymine, 15 nucleotides, you observe something different because here is a clear capacitance pit and uh, this was ascribed to condensation of this pyrimidine, not purine, but pyrimidine oligonucleotides on the negatively charged surface. Uh, in addition to formation of these pits, we also ob observed uh, remarkable differences of in the strength of adsorption uh, in this order. The most, most strong adsorb was cytosine, then thymine, then adenine, and with, with guanine it is problematic to do this, uh, these experiments because it is practically impossible to prevent formation of G quadruplexes in homogy, longer homogy sequences. Yes, so, so uh, guanines make, uh, make problems, but, uh, but still uh, we observed uh, something uh, which was, uh, in terms of this adsorptivity, uh, which was similar to, to the adenine homo oligonucleotide. And as we are interested in the behavior of different uh, structures, we uh, uh, we realize that we should be aware of behavior of such single-stranded loops. For example, in this G quadruplex, this, uh, these are guanine quartets and some loops containing different bases, which uh, often contain stretches, uh, short stretches, but still, still stretches of pyrimidines, and these stretches can strongly influence the behavior of, of the whole structure at the, at the electrode due to uh, the effects of these single standard loops. Okay, so now something about the catalytic hydrogen evolution. You know that in the area of protein electrochemistry, uh, the catalytic signals uh, have been used from practically from the beginnings of polarography. And uh, this applies to the Brdička reaction, uh, which uh, is specific for thiol compounds, including proteins that contain cytosine in the presence of cobalt side, uh, salts. And also this peak H, it is an instrument which, which was, uh, which was uh, developed by mainly Professor Palicek and in collaboration of uh, Veronika Ostatná. Uh, in, uh, let's say, two last two decades. And uh, this is a catalytic signal which depends on the presence and accessibility of uh, basic amino acid residues like arginine, lysine, histidine, and or cysteine. And uh, it was used for you can find in the literature many papers on the uh, utilization of the signal in uh, studies, for example, DNA protein interactions, protein protein interactions, lectin sugar interactions, and, and uh, so forth. And also in studies of amino sugars, uh, where, this, uh, where, where the anal analogous signal is uh, produced by uh, sugars containing free amino groups, but not acetylated amino groups, yes, so, so it is, it is uh, specific for the, for the basic residues, sufficiently basic residues. Uh, in the uh, area of nucleic acids, this catalytic hydrogen evolution was or has been used uh, to study 
modification of uh, nucleic acids with something which is catalytically active. So uh, the DNA itself or RNA itself was uh, considered to be inactive. We knew that there is some catalyt catalysis, catalysis of uh, hydrogen evolution, but uh, it was not connected with appearance of uh, useful signals. So it was uh, the, the observations were uh, discussed in terms of no useful catalysis in nucleic acid itself and we can use uh, nice catalytic uh, signals of for example osmium complexes, platinum complexes or such sulfur containing moieties uh, like in this case uh, of, of the unnatural uh, base pairs introduced into DNA uh, to expand the genetic code and I will say you uh, some, something more a little bit more uh, later. Also these thiopyrimidines are catalytically active. Uh, so uh, on the other hand uh, recently uh, this uh, overview was uh, completed by catalytic hydrogen evolution in unmodified nucleic assays. For, uh, the first paper was uh, just showing that under certain conditions DNA can produce the uh, peak, uh, analog peak analogous to this peak age and later it was used uh, by uh, Vlastodor Chak and uh, Professor Palacic uh, who was leading the, the work and uh, it was used to uh, observe uh, catalytic deuterium evolution and HD exchange in DNA. This is very in in interesting because using very simple electrochemistry you can detect exchange of, uh, of uh, deuterons for protons or, or uh, vice versa uh, without any complicated uh, instrumentation. This is, uh, I think, uh, yet the last uh, paper on this catalytic hydrogen evolution in DNA. And uh, in this study, under the leadership of Veronika Ostatna, we were interested which which components of DNA are responsible for these catalytic signals. And uh, we recognize that it is adenine and or cytosine, because uh, oligos that contained uh, cytosine residues or adenine residues or both together uh, gave this catalytic effect but not uh, for example GT sequences, uh, uracil based uh, oligo or thymine. Yes, so, so uh, this catalytic hydrogen evolution is specific for this amino basis or even may, maybe more exactly to reduction products of this amino, uh, amino basis because uh, first uh, we observe this reduction peak and then the catalytical, uh, catalytical signals of due to catalytic hydrogen evolution. Yes, now I, I, I will skip to this study involving G stages in a series of oligonucleotides uh, at the beginning, we uh, designed such uh, such uh, study uh, to uh, investigate the behavior of uh, oligos that uh, form parallel interstrand G quadruplexes. Again, this is the G, G quartet and uh, scheme of the quadruplex structure, and it is formed as it was uh, confirmed by uh, CD spectroscopy uh, from this stretch containing five, uh, five G's in a row. And uh, we measured, of course, signals of guanine, yes, we are talking about guanine here, on carbon electrodes, where you can see something which, is, which uh, looks like uh, obvious, that if you have more guanines, you have bigger signal of guanine. It was something like okay. But with this uh, another peak specific for guanine that we measured in this study uh, using the mercury electrode and 
it is maybe maybe it is not so important if it is mercury electrode, but it is uh, under specific conditions when if you can imagine if you measure cyclic voltammetry from less negative to more negative potentials with uh, uh, the switching potential behind the peak of reduction of adenine and cytosine and go back you get this signal which is specific for guanine and it is observed only if you apply sufficiently negative uh, vertex potential because there in this in this area uh, guanine is reduced to 7 8 dihydroguanine and this one gives this peak uh, during its reaction back back to guanine this uh, reaction is not electrochemically uh, reversible it is chemically reversible and it was not very clear what is the mechanism of this re reduction and uh, our recent studies maybe uh, brought some some light to this problem but uh, if you know what happens if you uh, want to detect this peak of guanine on on mercury you work at negatively charged surface so uh, the explanation uh, looked like uh, very very uh, straightforward if you are at negatively charged surface the stable quad uh, if it is stable the stable uh, quadruplex segment is repelled of the uh, from the electrode and single stranded flanking sequences remain adsorbed and or, or like that and uh, this makes if there is the quadruplex this makes this uh, guanine reduction ineffective and the peak is decreasing as the uh, length of the guanine uh, stretch is increasing uh, if you are on carbon the, uh, and measure the oxidation of guanine you are at positively charged uh, surface and the uh, quadruplex structure is attracted so uh, you observe increasing signal with increasing number of, of guanines in, in the structure uh, this uh, looked very very simple and we published that but later we uh, continued with uh, other oligonal chloratides containing these G stretches and please now uh, focus only on this A7, G7, A7 and T7, G7, uh, T7 uh, you observe very nice peak of guanine with AGA but practically nothing with TGT and moreover uh, using the CD spectra we uh, observed practically no quadruplex structure for the uh, AGA the, no, no, uh, no uh, nice uh, CD sig signal was detected for any of them but if there was something it was for this active oligo, not for this silent one, yeah? So in this case it uh, didn't work, it cannot be assigned to the G G4 formation. Just briefly, if we designed a, uh, another series of uh, G stretches surrounded by, by something and in, included C and A into the flanking sequences, we observed this G peak and even for other uh, sequences which were not like these G blocks but were alternating like G A uh, 37 times or G T 37 uh, G A was active at least like this but this G T was silent so it me means that the structure the quadruplex structure is not at least it is not the only factor that influences the uh, reducibility of uh, guanine to generate the product which then gives this this peak and uh, if you remember A's and C's uh, adenines and cytosines are those uh, bases which are uh, which are catalyzing the hydrogen evolution 
This uh, sample cell order work on uh, cisplatin modified DNA where we observe that modification with cisplatin potentiates reduction of guanine in, in the DNA. Uh, maybe it is uh, better to use this simple scheme. If you have unmodified DNA and to do the cyclic voltammetry in this uh, range and in that range, you observe nothing. Only if you, if you go uh, behind the CA peak, CA reduction peak, you get the peak of guanine. Because only in this uh, area the guanine is reduced to get the product which is here oxidized. If you use uh, cisplatin modified DNA or simply add cisplatin into the background electrolyte, you observe the catalytic current uh, like, like this and then this then it is enough to put the uh, switching potential to here behind the line of the catalytic hydrogen evolution current and uh, you observe the, the, the peak G. Yes, so uh, this suggests that there is some, uh, another, some, some other mechanism of guanine reduction which uh, is probably not electrochemical but chemical and here plays uh, here the uh, evolved uh, hydrogen plays the key role and the same is uh, the, the, the same we can uh, we can say about the catalysis by the peak by, by the reduction product of, of uh, cytosine and adenine uh, this is a uh, very simple experiment. If you have the black curve uh, is uh, unmodified DNA of the oligo, oligo T7G7. T7 and uh, this is the GT alternating against nothing on the black curve. If you add cisplatin, you activate the reduction of uh, guanine and observe the oxidation peak which is given by the uh, reduction product. And even if you uh, have these adenine-containing uh, oligos, which are active by themselves, uh, the addition of cisplatin potentiates the reduction and makes, uh, makes uh, this uh, oxidation peak bigger. Uh, how is the timeline? Two minutes. Uh, yeah, can I finish? Because, uh, yeah. So, uh, this is uh, maybe some conclusion. Uh, here we can say, see that reduction of guanine in the negative potential uh, range, uh, like on mercury electrodes, but not only on the mercury electrodes, is dependent on hydrogen evolution and in the presence of the catalysts like the reduction products of the uh, cytosine and adenine bases or in the presence of uh, cisplatin this reduction is potentiate and, uh, uh, potentiated and uh, uh, it means that the composition of the oligonucleotide does, uh, does matter in, uh, in uh, uh, what you finally observe on the voltammogram. Yes, now a few, uh, only a few examples of uh, recent applications of electrochemistry to study or to analyze uh, modified DNA. It means uh, DNA which is composed not only of the natural components, but also from something which is not natural. And very good uh, example of, of uh, the unnatural components are these artificial bases. Uh, either uh, those developed by Professor uh, Banner uh, in the US uh, who uh, developed uh, so-called artificial expansion of genetic uh, information system where uh, these bases with permutated hydrogen bonding properties are used to 
at the letters of a genetic alphabet. It is, uh, there is some idea that uh, if uh, this is possible, uh, it is also possible to reprogram organisms and uh, give them instruction how to synthesize, uh, biosynthesize something which is not accessible by, by uh, maybe even uh, organic uh, chemistry tools. And uh, this is, uh, these are uh, more or less uh, derived from the natural basis but are uh, chemically altered to stabilize such tautomers which form specific base pairs uh, between only something which is unnatural and something other which is unnatural. And uh, you can see that for an electrochemist uh, some of them can be very interesting because for example this is a Z base contains nitro group, which is uh, electrochemically very, <laughs> very uh, uh, nice uh, to, to, to detect in uh, different samples. And uh, this is another example. This is something which was uh, developed by Freud, Freud Romsberg in Scripps Institute. And uh, you can see that there is these uh, these moieties are not base uh, are not paired uh, using the hydrogen bonds, but uh, are only uh, to some extent uh, shape complementary, and uh, even such uh, such species can be replicated in uh, in uh, DNA using bacteria, and. Uh, Regarding application of electrochemistry, uh, we published uh, one paper about the banner basis. You can see, uh, just for, in for in illustration, that there are uh, several signals that can be used to identify them. And uh, as I have already mentioned, uh, particularly those bases, uh, unnatural bases, which contain the nitro group are very promising for uh, electrochemical analysis because uh, on one hand you have a very large peak of the nitro group reduction and then you can generate this uh, hydroxyl amino nitroso uh, reversible system and in the case of the of the uh, Romsberg uh, uh, Romsberg basis or basis, I don't know if these can be called basis, but in the terminology of, of molecular biology it is okay, I think. Uh, we, uh, or my colleague Jan Spacek, the first author of this, of this paper, uh, observed that uh, these, uh, these uh, species and particularly this uh, moiety is a very strong hydrogen evolution catalyst, and we were able to detect uh, uh, this uh, uh, unnatural base or base pair uh, in plasmid DNA in very huge excess of uh, natural DNA components. And uh, Romsberg and his co-workers were very, it was, it was very impressive for them because uh, in this case, uh, electrochemistry was uh, clearly much uh, uh, much more sensitive and also specific in this particular case uh, than metals they are usually uh, using and uh, maybe you notice that I was talking mainly about mercury electrode so there is such question can be asked for, for example for, of course because uh, uh, there are some reasons uh, for uh, using uh, electrodes which are more green, uh, let's say, than, than mercury, even, uh, even if uh, I believe that in the laboratory, in the basic research using polarography with mercury electrodes is, is uh, uh, okay. And uh, the one way is to use carbon electrodes in the negative, negative potential region, as uh, it was uh, 
shown by uh, Jan Špaček again and Aleš Daniel. And Aleš Daniel is involved in development of uh, electrodes which are uh, based on deposition of amalgam particles on different substrates like ITO or different form of carbon electrodes. And in this case, uh, we can uh, observe the catalytic currents uh, almost as nicely developed like uh, on the mercury electrodes. And uh, moreover, using the uh, amalgam particles, also other uh, techniques, including plasmonics, can be uh, applied. I would like to thank my colleagues which, uh, who, who were uh, shown in the many portraits uh, throughout the uh, presentation. Uh, of course, uh, my thanks belong to the funding bodies and I thank you for your kind attention. Bioelectrochemistry, well, there's a long tradition, as you have pointed out, of DNA electrochemistry, mm -hmm. but obviously a lot of challenges for the future.